architect at Cloudera. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me over to Switzerland to present on uh, Cloudera and Pilot. So what I'll talk about today, um, I'll talk a bit about uh, Beyond Batch. So um, traditionally Hadoop is a, a batch orientated system. And there's a, a, a drive to move away from the batch for certain use cases. And this is where the color comes in. Um, give you more of a real time uh, interactive access to the data in, in Hadoop. I'll talk about what Impala is, um, its capability, how it's put together, its architecture, and uh, I'll write down at the end so you can see how it compares to uh, existing tools uh, as part of the Hadoop stack. Okay, so beyond batch, um, the, the line at the top there is uh, just says for something that MapReduce is just, just too slow. So um, traditionally MapReduce is a, is a batch oriented system. So you write your, your MapReduce code in Java, say, and you submit your job to, to Hadoop. It runs the map, map stage. It, uh, assists the intermediate data to this and then the reduce stage will run and copy it to a different node in the cluster and then it will present the results back to you. And that's all relatively high latency, although you can analyse petabytes of data, um, you have to wait for that whole process to run. Um, in addition to uh, MapReduce, so MapReduce to start with, you, could, you could have to write the MapReduce in, in Java. Um, and then uh, Apache Hive came along, which gave um, users uh, an SQL SQL front end to do. So you could, instead of writing Java, you could, if you're familiar with um, SQL, you could just write, write SQL statements and issue those to Hadoop and it would go off your query data. Um, the downside to, to Hive, um, I guess, is in this context, is it still relied on MapReduce for the execution engine. So although, if you're more familiar with a relational database, you issue, issue your SQL statement, you would expect the results pretty much instantly. Whereas with Hive, it would uh, transform the SQL into uh, MapReduce jobs under the covers, and have to submit those jobs to Hadoop to get the results back. So you're still running at quite high latency and, and low throughput. And by low throughput, I mean you can't just, it's not very interactive, you can't keep submitting queries and expecting results back. You have to wait for this uh, MapReduce framework to run, uh, analyze the data in the HD base, and then get you the results back. A high, uh, also has a relatively high runtime overhead, so there's a lot of uh, work that goes into parsing the SQL statement, converting that into a set of MapReduce jobs, and then executing it. And Google realised this earlier on. I mean, Google invented Hadoop, basically, and invented MapReduce and the distributed file system. Um, but early on, they realised that uh, MapReduce um, wasn't um, for every use case. It didn't solve all of their problems. <coughs> and the analysts inside Google wanted faster results back. So they didn't really care how big the data was or that it was distributed across a huge cluster. They wanted to be able to query quickly. Um, they wanted to see how many hits a web page had, for example. They wanted to be able to see over six, 12 months how many hits, how many visitors they had, that kind of stuff. And they didn't want to wait half an hour, an hour to get these results back. They wanted an instant. So Google started working on a system called Dremel, um, which basically is a uh, scalable, interactive, ad hoc query system for um, analysis of read-only data. And what that basically means is a, it's a query front-end that gives you fast, interactive results for, for big data, data stored in the cloud. And in 2010, Google released uh, the Dremel paper. Um, basically, they wanted to share what they had done with the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the community and uh, really explained, the paper explains how they achieved this fast interactive response over of data. In addition to explaining how this worked, they described um, a novel 
file format that they developed as part of Dremel, uh, which basically is a nested file format which allows very quick scanning through the files to retrieve the information a lot quicker. And uh, there's another extract there from the paper, and they say it's capable of running aggregation queries, basically counts and stuff, over tree and row tables in seconds. So it's very interactive, very, very quick. And the link at the bottom of the slide there is just a, a link to the paper. And I really recommend reading the paper. So it's really interesting. It really sort of explains how Google have gone from this batch orientated MapReduce um, platform to a more interactive, fast response system. And this is really the basis for uh, Clever as a compiler system. So, part of that, so um, in 2010, when the paper was released, um, Cloudera were excited about the capability as the rest of the community. And they went ahead and started writing Impala based on the sort of requirements and, and the, um, the stuff that Google had explained in the journal paper. Um, and the goals for Impala really were to be a general purpose um, SQL query engine for Hadoop. It should serve uh, for both analytical and transactional workloads. And by this, <coughs> the analytical side of it would be the more ad hoc, um, interactive, and faster responses. But it should also support the more traditional um, transactional workloads, and this would be like ETL and the more long running processes that would, would be run in that reduced hive. Impala should <coughs> support queries that take uh, from microseconds up to, to hours to cover all use cases. And it should run directly with Hadoop, so you shouldn't have to set up an Impala cluster separately from the rest of your Hadoop cluster. So the daemons are co-located, one's next to the, the data node, for example. Um, the same file formats should be supported in both, so sequence files, text files, Avro. And Impala should utilize the same storage managers um, instead of introducing a whole new set of processes. The metadata for the system and the data is already stored in the name node and Hive's metastore. So Impala will utilize these um, existing processes to enhance what Hadoop does. Impala, the whole premise is it to be really high performance. Um, and the decision was made to write in C++ rather than Java, which is what the rest of the back is written. Um, writing in C++, um, C++ gives you more sort of native access to the operating system. You can do things a lot faster. Uh, it utilizes uh, an open source library, LLVM, which basically allows you to do runtime code generation. So it's a library for um, uh, runtime compiling. And there's direct access to the data. So fundamentally, there's no MapReduce uh, framework to go through this high latency framework. The compiler can access the data, the data directly on the HDFS or on an HBase. And um, <coughs> really, uh, Impala must retain the user experience. So um, users that are familiar with Hive, familiar with Hive. Uh, SQL, Hive version of SQL, you should easily be able to migrate over to, to Impala um, and uh, you can get the benefits immediately rather, rather than having to rewrite some of their analytics or rewrite the SQL to fit into the system. And um, Impala is 100% open source, so I know we're working on this for sort of 18 months to two years. Um, the code is freely available to, to download online. Um, it's, a, it's a patchy license to so use. So moving on to uh, the capability, um, so Impala <coughs> supports HiveQL, which is a, a subset of SQL 92. Um, so basically anything, any SQL statements you can issue to Hive, you can issue to Impala. It supports uh, all of those um, operations listed there. Um, and the ones I've um, highlighted here in this horrible green color are the, going to be the features released next year. So the version out at the moment is the uh, beta release, and early 2013 there will be a, a GA release which will support additional features. 
And this will include um, some uh, basic definition support, so you'll be able to create and update tables in Impala, what you do in Hive. Um, Impala, as I, as I mentioned already, directly queries the data in the HDFS and in HBase, um, and supports text files. And in the GA release, these would be um, press text files. It supports uh, sequence files, uh, which can be snapping or music compressed. And then um, in the GA release also Avro and Trevi. If you're um, familiar with Hadoop, you may be familiar with Avro already as a file format. Um, and Trevi, Trevi is something really new, so um, as I said about Google, uh, Google's Dremel paper and um, talking about a novel file format they, they had developed as part of Dremel. And Trevi is really um, kind of is, well, it's open source, so it will be a and the Apache equivalent of this file format to allow um, uh, even better performance out of the Impala. And I'll come on to this a bit later in the, in the talk. Can so, I ask a question? Of course. Um, there's no indexes. Nope. Nope. Right. No, no. Nope. The data is yeah, stored uh, in, in the HDFS, structured, unstructured, there's no index. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're using, I guess, uh, the data in HBase. Um, in part of the query HBase 2, which will obviously you would have designed your scheme and stored the data in HBase. Um, so, a bit more about the uh, capabilities. So, um, Impala is a familiar and unified platform for Hadoop. So, um, as I've said, it uses Hive's meta store. Um, and you can submit SQL queries via ADBC and um, the Beeswax Thrift API. So uh, Beeswax is part of the Hue front end, so basically it's just a, a web a web page that allows you to submit um, SQL queries to Hive and also supports now in Hive. And when you submit your SQL query, it's, um, it's distributed only to the nodes with the relevant data. So it uses the metadata it, it gets from um, the Hive data store and the main need to work out where the data is stored in your cluster and uh, distributes the query to, to those nodes to, to the data. Yeah. Um, and what's different, I guess, a lot to, to MapReduce is um, when you're running MapReduce, you do the map phase, the intermediate data of the, the map phase is persistent to disk, whereas in Impala, everything is in memory, so it's, it's, it's stored in memory and it's a process to process data exchange. All of the daemons running in the cluster um, um, swap data and um, exchange data um, directly. There's no persistence to this, so you can sort of bypass that IO layer. And uh, as with all of the, the other tools in the Cloudera's distribution <coughs> of Hadoop, um, it supports Kerberos authentication. So if you have a more secure setup with Hadoop, um, it part of its fits into that. And the point at the bottom now I just want to make is um, there's no fault tolerance in Impala. And what I mean by that is um, when you're issuing Hive statements over MapReduce, uh, MapReduce has built-in fault tolerance. So if one of your map tasks fails, for example, the framework knows about this and can just run it on another node. If someone pulls a power out and if you notice, it's fine, it just runs it somewhere else and the user doesn't even necessarily know this has happened and still gets the results. Whereas Impala is more fail fast and it's designed this way. So if the query is running on the node and you pull the plug, the entire query will fail and you have to restart. And I guess this is okay for queries that run for seconds, which is an issue, but um, I guess it's something to, to bear in mind if you're thinking about running more long, longer, um, longer running uh, queries and transactional workloads. And uh, maybe it's a uh, point is that you have to analyze uh, what kind of queries you want to issue to the system and maybe hide is a better choice for your online queries in the Impala code. Well, having the resistance to disk and the process to process data exchange to lose the troubles if the data set is a bit bigger? So I, I, I do have a point about that later on. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's uh, so much more difficult to manage because everything is in memory. And uh, this is... Uh, Obviously, a very difficult challenge to, to address. And yes, I guess um, with this initial release, there's a, a point I'll make later on about memory. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's much more difficult to keep everything in memory, especially when you're joining tables together and you can have a um, So performance, um, the slide is talking about comparing Impala to, to Hive. Um, the way Impala is written, the way the demons run, and the fact that um, it's, it's written in C++, we're seeing a lot uh, more disk throughput with Impala, um, and for more sort of I/O bound workloads, it's three to four times faster than Hive. Um, the queries that uh, translate into multiple MapReduce phases, in the, uh, larger joins, more complex joins, for example, will, will typically be two to three map separate MapReduce jobs that have to run sequence. Um, Impala doesn't have to do this. Um, so in these cases, uh, we're seeing sort of a, a 45 um, times faster than higher to, to run the compiler queries. And then queries that run against in-memory cache data uh, are seeing the most speed up. So this is up to 90%, 90 times faster so than half. And what I mean by this is uh, this is taking the, the operating system benefits now. So you're reading from file and you've got some spare memory. The operating system is actually caching all of that data to the memory. So if you're issuing similar SQL statements in the part over and over again, more than likely that data is in memory rather than on disk, so it's just reading from memory as a lot quicker. So somewhere between three times and ninety times is what we're seeing with uh, the performance games here in part, but it really depends on what kind of workload you're doing. Okay, that's sort of uh, what, where, where Impala's come from, the background and, and what Impala does. So now I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the architecture, how it's set up and um, how it runs in your cluster. So there's two processes. There's the um, Impala D process and that runs on every node in the cluster alongside the data nodes for example. And the Impala D's handle the um, client requests. So a client will connect to an Impala D server uh, process and issue SQL statements uh, over ADBC or Thrift. And the, the process handles the query planning and the execution and the streaming of the results back to, to the user. And there's uh, the other process, uh, the state store process. There's, it's, so there will be a single instance in the cluster. And this kind of like runs alongside the main node in the heart of the store. And it provides a name service so the, the individual part of the demons running in the cluster register with the state store. So it knows, knows what's running basically and can uh, distribute that information out to the cluster. So the individual part of the demons know about each other. So when they're going through the query planning, they can say, okay, this data resides on this remote compiler demon. I'm going to send that piece of the query there. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's just basically used for, for finding data. So in a basic kind of setup, there'll be uh, put three Impala processes here. Um, the Impala state store at the top runs alongside the name node and the high node store. And over the other side, uh, we've got the um, the, the, the um, uh, basically whatever system you want to develop, you want to submit um, SQL queries to Impala, you do it over ADBC, where you have the Hue Beesbox plugin, which connects to Impala using the And the, uh, the Impala Ds uh, continually talk to the state store to update the state and to receive metadata from the query planning. A user connects to uh, an individual Impala D process, and uh, submits its SQL, SQL query. And then the, the query planner, um, part of the process, turns that SQL request into a collection of plan properties. So it knows about the other demons, it knows where the data is in the file system, it splits the query up into smaller fragments and can distribute that out to the, the rest of the entire process. And this is what the query coordinator does. So it takes the, the plan fragments from the planner and it coordinates the execution, or initiates the execution of that, the, the plan fragments and the individual Impala demons. 
and this might also include uh, the local um, uh, execution engine. And then the, um, the individual and pile demons query the data, whether it's <coughs> directly in HDFS or um, in a H-based region server. And then it will stream the results between uh, individual processes, so if it needs to join on different data, um, it can exchange the data joins the memory, and then the, the end result is streamed back to the client. So, current limitations. So, uh, Impala has been uh, released uh, just a couple of uh, episodes last month after Hadoop World on the uh, 24th of October. There is some uh, limitations to the initial uh, beta release, which will um, be added in the next version. So there's no uh, custom studies, so there's no, you can't buy a, as you can hide, a custom serialization and deserialization format. So if you wanted to store your data in a JSON format or XML or something like that, you can't query that in the at the moment. There's no use of defined functions uh, in PDF. So I mean, if you're familiar with Hive, you can write um, small Java functions that you can execute as part of your query. And these are called UDFs. Um, the parlor will support these, but in the first uh, beta release it doesn't. Coming back to your point earlier on. <laughs> so the joins at the moment are done in the uh, memory space of, of, uh, of that no larger than the uh, smallest node. So basically if your smallest node has got 20 gig RAM, that's the memory space you can, uh, your, um, your um, strength to do your joins um, in the parlor. So that's changing next year. Um, this is just for the, the initial data release. So until that's released, you may see, I guess, some issues with doing really large joins with tables. Depends on the size of your machine. And then uh, the individual and pile ADs, and you read the state as the metadata at startup. So when the, when the demons start, the register will just need to get down with the metadata so we have the cluster. You can force a refresh manually, but that's the alternative. But the, the stack storage, isn't that the kind of index because you have your metadata in there? Or? Um, I get, it's not an index on the, the data itself, it's just um, pointers to where the data is. So it knows where um, a particular I guess, range of data is stored in, in a particular file <coughs> in HGS. Um, it's Actually, the, probably the query pattern has to do some kind of real-time indexing, or uh, I cannot believe uh, that uh, it should be so fast as you do. If, if you have of course, no, this is an so it's not an index in a traditional sort of uh, database in the context, but yes, it's, uh, it's metadata about what the data is stored in the HDFS and in the HBase itself. So, so the query does not save it. It's an uh, order to state that. Yeah, yeah. So it knows what the blocks are in the HDFS, for example. Um, so it knows for a particular piece of data whereabouts exactly in the file system and what node in the file system that they have, what node in the cost of that, that was item. So it can send that up. So in the future, um, there will be a GA release next year, and that's uh, the moment you pencil in for Q1 2013. Um, it supports some um, EDL, uh, so you can do create that. Uh, there will be uh, a basic uh, cost based optimizer, so we'll start taking in other metrics about the cost of the network performance, uh, performance of the individual nodes, because of memory utilization, CPU utilization. Feed into the query plan so it can work out where best to execute parts of the query. Joins will be done in aggregate memory, so um, there'll be a lot more memory to play with to do what to do in the last joins. And the metadata distribution will be automated, so the state store will continue to shout this metadata to the individual, individual RD processes, so it always up to date. And coming back to uh, Trevny. So this is the file format uh, described in, uh, in the journal paper. And uh, Doug Cutty, so the, the guy that wrote the Duke in the first place, uh, was working on uh, Trevny. And it's an open source version of uh, this file format. 
and it will be a column based storage format like Dremels and it basically allows much quicker scanning through the files um, to retrieve the data. And instead of the bottom, so, so in parallel plus Trevor will be a Dremel superset. And by that I mean Impala will be able to match Dremel's performance um, in terms of getting results back to the user. But it will do more because Dremel, as we know about it from the paper, can only um, scan individual tables, whereas Impala can do joints multiple tables, so it's kind of like a super set of what Trevor does. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a demo. So what I'm, I'm just going to show um, a table that I've got in, in Hive, um, run a SQL statement against it, I'll show you how uh, quickly it runs, and then do this exactly the same, run exactly the same statement. So I've got a couple of tables, but the one that we're interesting for this demo is, uh, can I, I guess you can't read this, it's quite <laughs> But there's a table here called zip code incomes, and basically it's just a small data set um, which lists all of the zip codes in the states and on average. So, yes, that zip code. So I apologise if the text is not there. What I'm going to do is uh, show the query. So it's just a basic query stored in the file. It's just um, select count star from zip code income. It's just doing an aggregation on the table to show you how many uh, records it's up. If I run the uh, query in Hive using the uh, Using time to measure how long it takes. So basically, this is reading the SQL statement from the file, uh, transforming it into, in this instance, one map reduce job, submitting it to the uh, Hadoop cluster. <coughs> it's not a cluster because it's just one machine running on the map. Um, and then basically executing the map reduce phases and returning the results um, back. So I ran this earlier on and it took 30 seconds. So I'm hoping it doesn't take any more. There we go. So it's submitted to the cluster. It's running the map and reduce phase phases. There we go. Okay. So it took 51 seconds to run the, um, the query. And there's 33,178 rows. I mean, this is a very, very basic demo. Yeah, big data, exactly. <laughs> very basic demo, but imagine running this across petabytes of data in, in a big cluster. Yeah. It would be a lot, a lot bigger than 50 meters. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't really fit big data on the laptop. So I'm going to run exactly the same file um, in Impala. And what I was doing is just kind of. Uh, Connecting to the RD process running on the laptop. And it's done. So, again, you've got the really cool results 33,178. It took 0.2 seconds to return the results. That's doing exactly the same query as size, but it's just accessing the data directly. Run the first one again, there'll be any effects on the cache. So, I, I mean, because I ran this earlier on and I had not started it from cold, um, uh, the cache was already warmed up, which is really shitty, so I don't think there'll be any difference. We try. I Oh, this is 
website. I should say this is this is a demo VM download from Cloudera's website. So the data is being prepackaged. So speed up. It took four, a 49 seconds. Um, if I ran, I want to get zero point two seconds. The cache is already. So I've just uh, put some uh, contact information on the slide. Um, so it's probably a user at cloudera.com. It's just the, um, the group that you can send any questions you've got. And we'll uh, answer it. Um, feel free to send an email to me, uh, me at cloudera.com or connect uh, on Twitter. And that's, uh, that's all I had. So I just wanted to say thanks to Christian and Jean-Pierre for uh, inviting me over. To do this talk. Um, thanks for showing me around Spirit today. It's been, uh, <laughs> it's been good uh, talking to you guys and what Centric are doing and uh, doing in HBase and, and now in Cargo as well. So if you need local support, then I'll talk to you. So thank you very much.